Hi guys, I'm Meenil from your website learning. In this video, we will go through the C panel or control panel of site ground hosting. So let's start. Go on your site ground account, click on websites. To demonstrate the control panel, I have created a temporary domain. Click on site tools, you will be redirected to C panel of site ground hosting. This is the control panel of site ground hosting. First, we will set up a WordPress account. Go and click on WordPress. Click on install and manage. If you want to have an e-commerce website, click on WordPress plus WooCommerce. We will be selecting WordPress. Enter the username, password and email ID by which you want to log into your WordPress account. Click on install. WordPress is installed. Click on view site and we can see a website is created. To go on WordPress admin panel, click on admin panel. Click here on exit. It will take you to the WordPress dashboard. This is the WordPress dashboard. From here, we can create the website the way we want. Now let's go back to our site ground C panel. Click on dashboard. In the dashboard, on top, there is pin tool. In pin tools, we can pin the tools that we use most frequently. To pin any tool, click on edit pin tools and we can see all the tools which are on the C panel. To pin any tool, click on this pin and the tool will be pinned on the top. To remove any tool, click again on the pin and the tool will be removed. Once you start using the C panel, there will be certain tools which you will be frequently using. You can pin those tools on the top. Now let's go on the security tab. In security tab, go on SSL manager. So what is SSL? When we go on our website, we can see here not secure is coming. To have secure connection or to have a lock symbol here, we need to have SSL certificate. To get the SSL certificate, go on select SSL. In the drop down, three options are coming. Let's encrypt will only encrypt the domain. Let's encrypt wildcard will also encrypt the subdomain. And for premium wildcard, we need to pay. We will go ahead with Let's Encrypt. So click on Get. We have got the SSL certificate for the website. Now go on the website, refresh it and still we can see that not secure is coming. So what we need to do is we need to have HTTPS Enforce. So go on HTTPS Enforce. Switch on the HTTPS Enforce button. Now go on the website, refresh it and we will see that the lock symbol is coming and website is secured. Coming to protected URLs. If we want certain pages of the website should be accessed only by people who are having ID and password, we can do this by protected URLs. For example, if I want this sample page to be accessed by few people, what I need to do is, I need to copy the path. Don't copy the domain name. Paste the path here and click on protect. Now, we will have to create a new user. Click on create new user, enter the name and password. Click on create, user is now created. Either click on manage access or click on the key icon here. 
click on confirm now only people who have the username and password can have the access to the sample page let's go on the website go on the sample page so see it is asking for username and password we will enter the credentials and click on sign in now we can go through the page so this is how we can give an access to a page to a certain set of people by creating a username and password to delete this username and password so that everyone can view this page click on the three dots here click on delete and confirm by this only the user is deleted the url is still protected now go on urls and click on delete and confirm now let's go on website and see whether the page is still asking for id password or not so see now it is not asking for any id password blocked ips if you want to block certain ip address from visiting your website you can do by adding that ip address here which you want to block and click on block now coming to the speed section in this section there is cloudflare and caching i would advise you to first develop your website once the development is done then you should do the caching and cloudflare reason for this is if we are making changes on the website and we are also doing the caching all the changes which we are doing on website might not reflect as cloudflare and caching would be providing cache copies of the pages and posts therefore it is advisable to make your website and after that do the speed settings now let's go on wordpress we have already installed the wordpress we will go on staging if your website is already up and running and you want to make certain changes on the website making changes on website can be time taking and you won't want your visitors to see the changes on a daily basis what we can do is we won't make the changes on the live website we will make a copy of the website and make the changes on the copied website and then upload those changes on the existing website this will ensure that the visitors who are coming on the website won't find any glitches or changes time and again this process of making copy of the website making changes and uploading the changes on your running website is called as staging so let's do the staging for our website in this enter the name of the copy of your website click on create a copy of the website is created with the name alpha click on alpha and we are redirected to the copy of the website in the domain name we can see staging 2 is added we will make changes on this website to make changes on our website we have to go on our wordpress dashboard click here to log in to your wordpress admin panel we will change the theme of the website current theme on the website is 2020 let's change this theme to 2017 click on activate now let's visit this website in this copied website we can see that the theme has changed now go on site ground c panel click here on the three dots here two options are given full deploy and custom deploy full deploy means that all the changes made on the copied website will be uploaded on the actual website in custom deploy we can select what changes that we have made should display on the actual website 
if we go on custom deploy it will show the databases which are affected because of these changes to know about the wordpress databases the link is given in the description below here you can read about all the databases which are available in wordpress so we can select what changes we want click on next and the selected changes will be reflecting on our website we will be going ahead with full deploy click on confirm staging copy changes have been deployed on the actual website now go on our actual website and we can see that the changes are reflecting on the actual domain this is how we can make changes on the website without disturbing the website which is up and running now going on migrator in this you can migrate your website to other domain i would suggest take help of siteground customer care executive for this because if any change happen on this it will directly affect your website now let's go on domain we will first see park domain so in case you have any other domain that you have purchased and want that domain should load your current website for example i have a domain yourwebsitelearning.com and i also have another domain yourwebsitelearning.in or .org or any other domain on which i want that my current website should load so to do this we need to add the domain name here click on add this will only work if you have the domain name and the dns are pointing to the site ground now going on subdomains just add the extension you want to have as subdomain Let's add blog in this. Click on create and the subdomain is created from the main domain. Now let's go on redirects. If you want to redirect your website to some other website, you can do that by redirect. For example, I want someone coming to this domain to be redirected to yourwebsitelearning.com. So let us see how to do this. In this you can choose the type of redirect you want. whether you want permanent redirect or temporary redirect we will go ahead with permanent redirect here add the domain to which you want to redirect this domain so i'll enter yourwebsitelearning.com click on create now redirect is created let's check this we can see that we are now redirected to your website learning For DNS zone editor I'll suggest not to use this feature if you want to edit DNS contact site ground support and let them help you out next is email to create a professional mail id with a domain name like contact@onlinewebsitelearning.com we can do this with this feature so this feature is not available for temporary domain let me select a domain name here just add the account name set the password and click on create and the email account will be created to access this email go on the domain and add slash @webmail in the end press enter it will take you to the login page where you can enter the login credentials and click on login and you will have the access to the mail so this is how you can create a professional email id below accounts there is forwarders if you want to forward email you are getting on a particular email address to another email you can do this with forwarders just type the email address on which currently you are receiving the mail and here enter the email address on which you want to forward the mail click on create and forwarding will be done below forwarders there is auto responders you can send automatic reply to the mails you will be receiving in case you are not working or are on holiday you want an auto response should go to all the mails that you are receiving you can do this with auto responders to do this add the email id on which you are receiving the mail and you want to send auto responses type the name of the sender 
enter the subject and type the message. Here select the start date and time that is from when the auto response should go and here select the end date and time that is till when the automatic response should go. Click on create. So now any mail that you will be receiving from the date and time range specified will get an automatic reply from your mail ID. Now let's go on statistics. Here we will see the traffic summary that is how many people are visiting the website, how many page views we have like on June 2 there was one unique visitor, on June 5 there were five unique visitors. In audience tab we can see from where our audience is coming, from which country they are coming. Sources will tell you what keywords visitors are using to visit your website. Since there is not much traffic on the website, we cannot see what is the keyword which is being used. In behavior, we can see the most visited pages. In technology, we can see which browser they are using, which operating system they are using and many more such stuff. So guys, this is the control panel of SiteGround. We have covered all the important thing in the SiteGround cPanel setup. Now you can easily set up your SiteGround cPanel and start developing your website. If you want to know how to contact SiteGround helpline, click here. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.